Good Tao Tip Sunday, evil out your way. Mo Lang Tin Jin, I am your Talus Master, Ji Sifu. Let's begin the weekly Taoism show. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the Tao Tube Sunday, and let's begin our Tao Tube Sunday with the lecture. So let's get to the scripture on the website tinyatdragons.com. You can go up the menu and see the scripture. This is the Psalm Law, Psalm Sablok Chang King, the thirty. Six chapter scripture, and today we're going to work on the second chapter to bring you some wisdom. Before we start, let's go. Chapter two, Sam Choi. Okay, <clears throat> so welcome back here, and let's uh, take a look at what this whole chapter is talking about. Sam Choi is like the uh, combination of three elements. When the three elements combine together, it, it's like a whole system of its own. So here, the first thing is the Tin Te Dai Lo Sam Choi Ji Xin, which is uh, before this principle in nature actually exists. The Tin Lo Te Lo and Dai Lo system already is there. <clears throat> so we always talk about the Sam Lo Talism. Sam is three. Law is basically this thing what we are talking about. It's a system that envelopes everything. So you can see that there's like a sky, a ground, and something in between that is born out of the two. So basically, these three big system in nature is the three forces of creation. Now here it goes on explaining that the sky, there's um, <clears throat> the light. Okay, the celestial light from the sky, and the ground is like a lobby or an open area that actually let the light shine down. So imagine like a a yard that is open on the top, right? So light can shine in, and in the middle is where the human is. Now all these are actually just metaphor. Okay, I'll explain more as we go on. And it says that everything is born out of this system, this this whole、um, system, how it operates, to give birth to many many other things later on, including human being, animals, plants, everything. So the sky provides, the ground is responsive, is responding to what, to those. Um, human or the creation of nature. So the creation of nature says, "I need something. I need something." The ground will say, "Okay, yeah, we got something from the above. Now here you go, okay, like that, huh?" So you might think, "Wait a minute, how can the ground be like so humanized, right?" Well, think about it. The sky rains. The water comes down to the ground, right? Okay, so the ground got the water. It stores it up, 
and then and then it gives it to the plants and everything and then you know it's the the plant needs to have a root and the root is the thing that sucks up the stuff right if you just put the plant on the ground without the root it will have a hard time sucking up the water and nutrition so you need the root it's actually those uh things on the ground that is pulling in the things from the soil right so that's the metaphor okay so the, the ground is like uh it stores up all the elements all the resources when you need it it brings it to you now here it says that um when the human or the creations uh is born like they they go from weak to strong and when it's strongest point what does it do it had to give back it had to be doing something right why are you born that strong you have a purpose right nature needs you to be that strong there is a purpose so nature will give you the purpose now just like human being we are born and we eat we grow our body <clears throat> and um we will we will even like get like smarter you know we learn stuff as we grow up up to a certain point why are you doing all these why are you like non-stop learning getting better eating exercising why are you doing all these there's a reason as you grow up and mature to a certain state you kind of find your meaning in life why am i here what am i doing why do i go to school why do i go to work why do i have to earn money like there's a meaning behind now if you haven't find your meaning yet that means you've got to learn Taoism to kind of help you discover that huh okay anyway so when the human is done like you're almost dying and stuff okay at that point okay you die when you die you go back to the ground under the ground and the ground go back to the sky just like water you know it goes down here feed the plant and then whatever is left it goes back up okay so like the water goes back up to the air <clears throat> and then at the end they say that oh when the when the stuff from this uh, human level is done and the the product is like a fruit it's going back up the sky it combines together and then it gives again the next cycle begin again and that is how life works okay it sounds like um like a nature cycle okay um the sky rained down the water and then water down onto the ground the ground got it uh, and then it gives it to other things that need you know that like plants human whatever that needs the water and then when they're done they give something back to the ground such as your pee your poop whatever okay and then it goes back to the ground go back to nature now this whole thing how what does it have to do with you okay that's the question what does it have to do with you you are like a newbie towelist in a lineage and you're just starting to learn these things and you wonder like how is this actually related to me like the most important thing is you want to read a book and you want to know why am i reading all these like a lot of people read those um to ducking and things like that okay well <clears throat> you read these things and you're like yeah it is vague it is beautiful it sounds nice like all oh, the spring flower river or like well what does that have to do with me like what did it do like how is it practical to me now the thing is you don't have a master to point you the way and you just read the book okay the book is basically a reference it's not really the actual teaching it you need this reference and then to be able to um like understand the deeper meaning so here i'm going to tell you what it means what does it do with your talus learning journey like how is it important to you so keep listening <laughs> okay so let's say we want to first define what is the three party the sky the ground and the human okay that's a metaphor so we have three party like three groups the sky is basically the highest one that has everything so here it's talking about the gods and the tao and everything like those pre heaven elements the sky okay so you come in and become a disciple you know you are actually learning the stuff from the source of this lineage 
right? The source of the lineage is the gods of the lineage that passes on all the stuff. So there is the sky. The sky is basically the pre-heaven sources. Okay, so we have that. You're not going to directly drink from the rain, right? So where is the crown? The crown is the lineage. The lineage holds every one of us in one place. And it allows the sky to give us the stuff that we need. So whenever the sky needs to rain, for example, the wisdom and knowledge that is coming down from the sky, that like raining, they have to transfer it to the lineage first. And then the lineage holder will have to like work it out and then make it become part of the lineage. And then it will deliver to you when you are learning. So basically it's just like the rain. The rain goes down the ground, okay? The ground collects it. And then whenever, whatever things need the water, the ground just flows some to you and there you go. Okay, so there's the relationship. Sky, ground, human. Sky is the gods and pre-heaven side. Ground is the post-heaven side and the lineage. And human is the people in the lineage. So every one of us is basically in the same group, which is the human group. We all stand on this ground and we get the stuff from the sky through the ground. So based on this teaching here, how should it be like, how should the flow be like uh, for your learning? Well, first of all, you get into the Tao, get into the lineage and you start learning. The sky keeps on feeding you, meaning that the wisdom from the Tao keep going through the lineage and to you. So you keep learning stuff. Up to a certain point, you will feel yourself changing from not knowing to knowing more things, from weak to strong, from being like maybe you're like bullied by evil energy, evil spirit, and now you can protect yourself and others. So up to a certain point, you are more like a, a stronger, more stable, um, better state human being than before. So up to this point, you should know the mission that the Tao has for you. Why are you learning all these? Why the Tao need to give you these things? What's the point of like having the power and all that, like giving you the magic power, uh, the teachings, the wisdom? Why? Why the Tao need to teach you all that? Okay. Well, Basically, there goes the mission. You will know the mission. Mission such as what? Well, first of all, as a Taoist, your default mission is to help nature. Sounds very simple, right? How to help nature? What kind of help nature need me to do? Like, what am I doing here? Okay, well, look, our magic is um, mostly is doing things like cleaning up energies, exorcising evil spirits and all that stuff. That's what we do all the time, okay? <clears throat> we deal with uh, these these bad energies or evil energies out there that is actually causing trouble for human beings and other things, okay? Even animals. So we got to deal with these things in order to solve problems for ourselves, for others, and also for nature. These evil spirit evil energy whatever thing that is like causing problem they're actually like um chunks they're like garbage that is stuck in the middle of some like of the system and it is disturbing everyone it's disturbing you disturbing your friend and family it's disturbing anything around it and because of that nature will have one bit more of uh this obstructive energy it's blocking the system. It's stopping it from moving forward. It's causing trouble. It's like a traffic jam. It's like your phone has too much junk file, okay? You can now learn from this source and use its power to help nature to unclog it, to remove that crap, and then bring this thing back to nature in the pre-heaven side for it to be recycled. That is your basic mission. Now, what is your like specific mission that has made you very unique uh, compared to like normal disciples? Well, that depends on your progress and how you learn and all that. Once you 
um, it's like up to a certain level in the lineage, you will be learning something more specific. You will be finding out what you are specialized in, what you are good at, and then you will know how you can contribute to nature to make nature better. Oh yeah, making nature better is not like, oh, I go out and plant the trees and then plant the flower. No, 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, everyone have some strength, right? <clears throat> okay, nature is not just like flowers and trees and mountain. Nature includes everything, including technology. You see, if you don't have good technology, how can you manage the city today? If we are still stuck in like 2000 years ago kind of technology, we will have a lot of troubles. Like we cannot deal with flood. We cannot deal with climate changes. We cannot deal with a lot of things, right? Now you guys talk about like, oh, global warming, climate changes, whatever is getting like too cold, too hot, whatever. Okay, well, think about it. Two or 3,000 years ago, these problems all exist. Even you say, oh, but they don't have all these factories and stuff. Yeah, but they have a lot of other nature disaster. You look at the flood and everything. Like, how do people deal with flood back then? You don't have that technology. You cannot predict it. You cannot do analyzes. You cannot have the tools to deal with it. When it comes, you're like all doomed. You have to run away. It's very scary. Imagine in China back then, a lot of flood going on, right? And then it just wiped out the whole village and you're done. A lot of people, like, they, they got wiped out and the history... It's not even recorded because they don't have any sense of like, oh, we need to record our history. There's no internet. There's no YouTube. There's no nothing. No one knows about it. A village is and gone from history without even being known. Nowadays, even like, oh, somewhere like in China, you see, oh, there's a flood. Even you're in USA or Canada, you can still watch YouTube or other website and then like, kind of know what's going on right so technology is also part of how you can help nature look at the these lights okay like lightings and help to spread the message out why not <laughs> right uh cameras you know like we can make news we can make live streams and these things also help the whole process of how nature can be helped imagine you like you don't have Weather forecast, no technology, no weather forecast, no TV, right? So if you don't have all these things, how can you educate the future generation? Many people are stuck in the in, in the process of thinking uh, that talism is about like nature. You help nature, you need to go out and plant trees. That's like, <laughs> that's so shallow, okay? Like, why are you planting trees? <laughs> there are people doing it, like they are, you know, the, the trees people to do it, okay? You are supposed to do what you are supposed to do. Everyone have something they're good at uh, in their life and you grow up to a certain point that you'll realize, hey, I need to get a job, right? What are you good at? What do you like to do? And then you, you do that job and then you know what? Most of the time, those jobs are actually helping nature. When you help the society, you are helping the land as well. The land requires money to operate, to renovate, or whatever, right? You get a job, you pay tax. I hope you do, okay? <laughs> so you get a job, you pay tax, right? Tax money go to government, right? Government used the tax money to do what? Help the city, build the city, right? To, to repair the roads, to repair the pipes, right? So are you helping the ground? And then, okay, so while you are thinking that, oh, my job is just like, you know, nine to five, and I, I don't deal with nature, you are actually dealing with nature, okay? When you're working, you're using your talent and contributing to nature. At the same time, you're getting something back, like, to feed your family. But, you know, when you pay tax, you're supporting the country. Country needs your help, and then... The money goes to like repairing, uh, saving people, whatever. Even now, like the pandemic, like, you need money to deal with the situation. Seriously, like even you don't like the vaccine, you don't like the mask or whatever. The country is actually using all that resources to help 
And well, you say is like, oh, I don't agree. It's not useful, whatever, right? But it is actually helping someone. What else can you do that actually can make you sound more like you are more useful than the government? Like if you have the time to criticize, like, oh, the government is like BSing and that this is not working. Yeah, but can you bring out something that worked better? With one person, you cannot. You need like a whole big group of people to get that not so working solution, right? So imagine you one person, what can you do? They have like a group of people that that's what they can come up with. That's the best they can do. You can do better than them, right? Why don't you do your job and, you know, support the big group and let them take care of things and everyone do your own job, right? If you really want to be part of that big group, you can go and join the government and be part of their team, right? Okay, so this theory, we we go from like the lineage and leading to like your job and everything and to the the city you're living in, it it goes everywhere. Like this this theory goes everywhere. Don't think about like, oh, I want to contribute to nature, then I go back and plant trees. Just like here, okay? A lot of people, they learn Taoism. They think that by like, oh, I I learn a lot. I want to go, like give back. And then, and then what? They go to the altar and they give lots of food offerings and such. And that's it. They think, oh, I'm giving back to the God. You know, I'm giving my offerings. I'm burning incense. You know what? That's not going to happen. That That's not the real um, give back. That's not 100% of it. You're missing one thing. You should think about like, okay, if you go and just, like talk to the sky, okay, the God side, you just, you know, give back to that side. You're forgetting that you should go back to the ground first. You have to contribute to the ground in order for the God to see you and say, ooh, you're a good boy. How can you do that? Contribute to the lineage so that the lineage can help more people. When the lineage has the resources, it can go out and spread the Tao to more people who need to help or who want to help. And then and then more people like you will be helped, right? Just you thanking the God by burning incense, putting food offering, that cannot bring anything for the lineage. As a result, yes, your your message is received. But at the same time you're actually doing nothing solid that the God can see and like can see and consume. Okay. How can the God consume if I uh, contribute back to the lineage? Well, the God would be like, nice. Ah, you make our lineage big. Now we have more disciples. We have more believers. Now we can help more people. Hey, the God will like that. So make sure you know, everyone, this applies to your Taoism learning and your normal daily life thing. Don't just think so like direct, you know, like most people are very direct. So when they say, I want to give back to nature, I want to help nature. And then plant trees. <laughs> it's always like that. Okay. People are like, I want to help nature's plant trees, uh, recycle. Don't use that much plastic. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Do your job. Okay. Do what you are doing. You, you have tax, right? You have everything that you, you do is like a little bit of that is going to the government. The government needs that. And then they will be doing things for the land that you, you are living on. Okay. So, that's the kind of logic you got to like step back a bit and understand life is not like that direct sometimes you don't even realize you are actually helping nature every second you're alive so don't think about suicide like suicide is a stupid thing don't do that you know why every day you breathe in air you breathe out something for nature as well you are already a processor for nature to process the element you eat, you poop, you pee, right? Those things go back to nature and help nature as well. So it's like you think whatever you, goes out of your body is a waste. My poop and pee, they're, they are waste. But for nature, they can be fertilizer. Okay? So don't think so direct. Anyway, so that's it for this chapter. And ah, so let's move on. A little bit too long today. But we'll move on to the next uh, part where you can move around. And then we'll come back here. Let's go. Whoosh. Hoi, oh, ha. Hi, 
Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to this section of the Tao to Sunday. And today we're going to do some exercise to get going. And since we have a lot of um, questions built up today all about the Kung Fu and the Wing Chun classes that's coming up, we'll be giving you um, like a teaser, but not really a teaser, like a preview of the Wing Chun practice. First of all, let's begin by doing some warm-up together. Okay, very simple warm-up. Let me stand like this. Okay, let's go. First of all, okay, stand up like this. Shoulder width, your, your legs, and then roll your shoulder forward. Okay, just rolling the shoulder. It's a warm-up, okay? Roll the shoulder <coughs> forward. Roll backward. Make circle. Cut down outside. Make circles. Reverse the other way. Keep your arms straight. Okay. Put your hand like this. Shake it back and forth. Okay. Working on the wrist, uh, shake it back and forth. Okay, sideway, shake. Down, shake. You realize that your hand is actually starting to warm up already, huh? After all these. Okay, once you shake, let go of your waist, your your hip, your knee, and then bounce up and down. Bounce, bounce your body. Good. Now, I want you to have your left foot forward. Left foot forward, right foot backward like that. Almost like a bow and arrow stance. Gong bow. Left hand put here at the heart. Okay, you want to go from here, look, okay, from here all the way up the center line. Okay, hold on to your body and then you want to go swing down all the way and up. Okay, as you do, you can feel the momentum. It's like you go like that, your body kind of low down and you use the back foot to push and swing yourself back up. Okay, I'll do it 45 degrees so you can see better. Put your arm here. Okay, your palm always like that. Don't loosen up. Ready? Breathe in and go. Okay, next hand, put shoulder up the center line, make sure your palms like that, chop, okay. Very good. Next one. Very similar. Okay, we stand like that. A little bit pointing to the left. Okay. Make your arm like that. And you want to swing like this. Okay, ready. To the left side, swing a circle to the right, back down. Okay, let go. <laughs> Okay, the other way, chop downward, okay, up and down and up. Hmm. 
use your hip to make yourself swing. Step on the your left foot. Okay. Good. Let's do a like this. Okay. Ready? One, two. Okay, now you see my hand is not raising too high. They kind of make a straight line when they come out, right? Turn your body as you do that. Okay, make sure you, when you go up, it's a T. Okay, when we do too high, it becomes like this. Let's do higher, okay? The other way. Yeah. Turn your hip to make this fly up. Okay. Now that's a warm up. A little bit of spinning here. The other way. Okay, let's do this. Imagine something here. Okay, you want to hit this. And then here, hit this. It's using your knee. Okay, slowly. Let's go. Left foot. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Good. Okay, so let's do a little concluding exercise. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come up. Breathe in. Breathe out. In, breathe out. Okay, so get you started on the Wing Chun. Uh, let's do a little exercise with the Wing Chun. So put both legs together and you'll be learning how to open the stance. The Wing Chun that we're teaching uh, is rooted from the Yun Kei San series, which is the Guangzhou Wing Chun sect. And uh, the stance opening is very different from most of the Wing Chun stance you might see on the market today because all of them, I don't know why, but they keep getting wider and wider. <laughs> so this is a very traditional, uh, older style Wing Chun and they don't do wide stance. Okay, let's get going. Hold a fist, come back, breathe in and put your hand up here. Now, how high should your hand be? Look at here, okay? This dot right in front of your nipple, right? Wing Chun is the female created martial art. And you see, protect the boob, okay? Right here, protection. Come, okay, go down, kneel down like that. Open your stance like so. It's a 45 degree V shape without your leg going upward. So your leg is still here, okay? And then, using the front portion of your uh, feet, go like that, okay? When you do this, your angle should also be 45 degree, and then when you kneel down, it kind of clamp in, and you cannot see your toes when you go like that, okay? You can't see your toes. And then here, sit down a little bit, okay? Here, sit down a bit, like that, okay? Now, to test your stand, you should not let anything come up 
here and hit your groin. Okay? The clamp to stand in. <clears throat> it is not easy for most people. Okay? When you're not used to it, you feel pain on the knee or on here and it's like stretching you out. Okay? Well, that's why you need to keep doing it. Okay? Do it daily uh, with the punches and everything then you won't be feeling that anymore. So, <clears throat> sideways. <clears throat> up, down, open, close. This is called Yi Ji Kim Yang Ma. Okay, the stance. Punch. Come here and punch. Come here through your center line and then twist to punch. Okay. Uh, here, let me emphasize one thing okay it's not like this you see the fist and then it's not like that okay our punches is very different from that style it goes like that and make sure this spot is crossing your heart line okay your heart line keep the elbows in and now here the the wrist is responsible for turning while the elbow the back of the elbow go inside the center and push push forward okay so it looks like that you're punching the center you're punching like the heart level right here okay so that's the uh, punch in the Wing Chun it's called the Sam Sing Chui, the three star punch. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay. Three things to make sure you know. One, go out here. Okay. Squeeze. When you go at the same time, squeeze and turn at the same time. Here hit at the back and squeeze as well uh, number three your stance clamp down at the same time and tighten up okay <laughs> okay that's the three star punch when you chain it up it becomes something lean one two the chain three star punches and when you change it up you don't really go all the way back here you your fist is like from here and then out okay so it goes from the elbow and out that's our something trick uh we have a dummy right here so you can take a look so most people will think oh the wing chun is lacking power and it's not powerful right so because if you think the power is from here and out is from the hand. That, of course, that you don't have enough power because you're basically thinking that you need one powerful blow with one strike all coming from the hand. But the Wing Chun is the system that is like using your, uh, uh, using small to win the big, okay? So you want to like deal with this, not using your arm power so if we punch like that we get used to the short distance right then you need to really walk in in order to punch and make that distance okay when you walk in enough there is power you walk with the stance okay and also you do not like it doesn't work like that you need the specific stance to give you that power when you suck in here and it comes from the your your foot Okay, so uh, it gets more powerful when you get up close. When you're here, it's not so powerful. One thing I want to bring out is a uh, little thing that people don't know if you just watch the movie, is that you think, oh, there's a dummy, right? You need to like, ah, 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 and all the power into the dummy. Uh, that, that's not how it works. In Wing Chun, the dummy, is for you to practice your framework, your structure. Meaning that when you do the hand movement, it's all locked 
by the arm so that it like you're not really walking out of that structure right so in Wing Chun the dummy is not your heavy bag it's not for you to like beat it up and I see a lot of people like beating up their dummy uh, <laughs> that's not how we do okay dummy is actually done in a very soft method which you only need to have the proper uh, position and that's good enough so let's say if this hand okay is one of the one of the thing you see it's elastic right it's bouncing okay so let us do like say a technique a bong sao kai chui right here so if we want to do the technique okay you don't like you don't you don't like go hard on it basically all you need is to get the job done okay so right here you see it doesn't even bounce okay hey, hey, hey. You got it already. You don't have to make it bounce. Right? If you can get the get the the position right, you don't have to make it bounce. Right? One, two, three. Right? You see? Right? Like that. It's kind of like uh, controlling that spring. Right? When I'm sticking my hand to this thing, it's controlling the spring. The spring cannot get out of my get out of my uh, grip. My, my senses, my sensitive skin, okay, you see, ah, so it's not like you're more powerful uh, than you can kill the dummy and that's good, it's totally not, okay, in Wing Chun, it's a very soft technique, imagine a woman, okay, you're fighting a big guy, you don't want to be going hard on hard, so if this is like a very hard punch, you want to go the soft way, all you need is like touch it, go around, and then move that angle, and you can hit the other side. Right? Ah. Okay, so I guess uh, that's enough fun stuff for today. If you want to learn more, join the uh, monthly classes in September, or sign up right now <laughs> and for the September classes. Because if there's too many people, then we got to, you know, maybe we have to close up the class, <laughs> sign up, because if too many people, I can't teach like that. So. Uh, I have to see, but yeah, sign up for classes now if you want to learn, and we'll see you in the class. Okay, let's go back to the other set. <laughs> Bye! Hi, everyone. Welcome back here after the exercise, and today we got our questions right here. So this is the Q&A part. Let's go. Now, um, going through these quickly because we are kind of running short in time. So number one, how did the... How did the 36 chapter scripture uh, <clears throat> come to be in our lineage? So I guess this is asking like how this scripture uh, like happened to be here. Okay. Well, this is actually a good question because a lot of people will think that it's written like directly written by human. And it is actually. Okay. But it's basically taught by the gods and deities of the lineage. And then the human is the one to like group up the words and ideas and make it into a form that like people can practice and learn from. So it's basically a lot of wisdom taught by the gods and deities and the human in the lineage make it into a um, human understandable form, which is in Chinese. And then we have to teach it to people bit, bit by piece, uh, piece by piece. Okay, so like that. Number two, relating to Man and Mo, was different. Oh, okay. So this person is asking, um, lefties versus right hand. So <clears throat> does it have anything to do with like magic learning or something like that? Um, like if you're better with the left hand or right hand? Uh, no, it doesn't really have anything to do with the magic. Um, but you might have to... Like kind of learn how to use your right hand when you do full work and such like that. The energy flow is a little bit different. Um, it doesn't really matter for newbies. Like for newbies, it, it's okay. You can use any hand to draw your food. But as you learn up to a certain stage and you want to like really fine tune your stuff, you will eventually want to use your right hand. The energy is like the left hand. The energy is a little bit slower and more like uh oh if you want to use the scientific term it's kind of like low frequency and here it's like 
faster, more aggressive, higher frequency. Okay, so it's kind of like that. Uh, just a metaphor. Okay, so there is a difference, but for newbie, it doesn't really matter. Number three, our Taoists who learn kung fu stronger uh, than those who purely learn kung fu. Uh, let me try. <laughs> okay, so what about this? So people who learn kung fu and it's an uh, and they are a chef. They cook versus they just learn kung fu. They are not a chef. <laughs> what what are you asking here? I don't understand. A stronger as in what? Physically stronger or mentally stronger? What kind of strong? Um, I have seen people who do Kung Fu or like even bodybuilding. They look really strong, but their inside can be very weak. Like weak hearted. Okay, so when you kind of like say something that kind of criticize them and they will like suddenly go emotional and all that, they cannot even stand any kind of like impact to here. So to me, those are weak. You might be strong physically, but inside you can be very fragile. So what kind of strong are you talking about? As a Taoist, I can say that, well, ideally you're supposed to learn to get your heart, soul, and body stronger than a normal person. But that's ideally though, not everyone actually do the stuff to get stronger. I teach, you can be not learning or you can be not practicing. So it's not like a Taoist problem. It's a you problem. Are you doing it? You learn the Kung Fu, you learn the martial art, but you're not practicing daily. Well, that then you suck, okay? So number four, can cultivating magic make one Kung Fu stronger or can one use magic to make their Kung Fu stronger? That is so many Kung Fu questions, didn't they? Anyway, <laughs> so yes, um, <laughs> cultivating magic, your Kung Fu can be stronger, yes, uh, because magic in, in our lineage, when you learn magic, it's also with the um, Qi Kung, okay, energy work. So when you apply that to your Kung Fu, uh, it will get you stronger. At the same time, there's a lot of different styles of Kung Fu that also have Qi Kung. So it depends who your Sifu is uh, and do you or does your Sifu actually know that stuff? Do they teach you this stuff and are you actually using it? But yeah, in general, if you have Talus magic on you and you're doing Kung Fu, you should be like having an advantage over those who don't know that side. <clears throat> Number five. Which Kung Fu style have Ji Sifu learned before? Who wrote the question this week? <laughs> Everything's about Kung Fu. What's going on? <laughs> ah, maybe from the same person. <laughs> okay, what have I learned before? Uh, I learned a lot of stuff. So since I'm eight years old, I started my Kung Fu learning. So I learned uh, Tai Chi, uh, the Wu style Tai Chi, Yang style, Chen style, Three style of Tai Chi, and one more is called a Jiu Bo Tai Chi. Okay, so it's four style in general. I also learned a bit of the Wu Dang Tai Chi as well, the five, five style. And then uh, I learned, uh, well, back then in the old days when I was like in Hong Kong, I learned Taekwondo uh, as a kid, and I also learned uh, Seven Star Praying Mantis, and then I learned uh, uh, Northern Shaolin. Okay, and then when I come to Canada, I got in touch with other things. So um, when I'm young, like I'm in the teenager time, I start learning something uh, from like Choi Lei Fat Hong Kun, uh, the Hong Ka Kun, right? And then I also learn the uh, Wing Chun and I learn uh, Tai Chi. So basically a lot of stuff in the past, but the main primary stuff that I was uh, doing and teaching throughout my teens and like, you know, until like 30-ish. So. <laughs> Uh, the main thing that I teach is like the Tai Chi and the Wing Chun stuff. That's most, mostly those are the main dish. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's keep going. Number six, what exactly will be taught in the Wing Chun classes in September? Oh, that's right. We are teaching Wing Chun classes in September. And those uh, ads, not ads, but the product page is already up. So you can check out our website on tiadragon.com. It's already there. You can sign up right now for the September classes. Um, what exactly were we taught, the Wing Chun? Well, I will say, I have to see who, like, our audience first. 
Because I can teach you anything. The thing is, like, we have to look at who is joining and do they have the equipment or how's their body condition. Uh, ideally, well, if, like, average, average normal people join, I will start off with uh, teaching them the foundations and uh, going into, let's say, the uh, drills and some techniques. And I will see if people actually want to, like, purchase a dummy. Well, wooden dummies are expensive, I know, but there are other alternatives as well. So if you get like one of these dummies, like one of those at my back right here, uh, it's covered up anyway. <laughs> so if you use that, okay, you can still practice a lot of things. They have like spring arm and stuff like that. So it's very nice. You can practice those drills and things with the dummy. So if people are actually buying that, then we can teach more things about like the combat technique. But anyway, there's a lot of things to learn. So... You join, then you know. Uh, number seven. I saw the scriptures are written in Samnonese Pingyam. How are, how can one learn Samnonese? And is there anything in the linguistic of Samnonese? Okay, Samnonese is like a kind of like special dialect of Chinese that we use in the lineage, and it has like our own uh, accents and way of saying the word, and it, it has a magical purpose behind it. It's too much to explain right here. But it does have a magical purpose. In order to learn that, easy. Just keep doing it. Do more scriptures and spells and learn and copy. And eventually you will know how to like do, do the stuff naturally. It's like how baby learn the language. You just copy. Okay, very simple. Number eight. Is there a difference between reciting the spells in Mandarin, Cantonese, Taiwanese, or Samnanese? Uh, yes, there's difference. Okay. Um, any kind of Chinese dialect is okay. It will work as long as you know what it means. But learning it in Samonese gives you um, one level higher of power, okay? Because I said already, it has a magical purpose. There's stuff done to the system. So if you use Samonese, it's going to be a bit stronger. Uh, number nine, if use magic to fight back or protect ourselves is considered good, then what would be considered evil magic? What does it mean for the monthly class when they say we cannot use magic to harm? Hey, <laughs> That's about the August class, okay? The, the August class, we have uh, a teaching on the five ghost magic, right? So you can join that special class to learn about the five ghosts. Now, evil magic is not, like, bad to do. You can do evil magic as well. But the thing is, like, you want to hit people. Let's say hit people, right? Well, if the guy is a bad guy to you, why don't you hit him, right? Then you need to be evil to him. Ah. Okay, so evil doesn't mean bad to do but we should not like just you know how to use your fist to punch things okay so don't go around and bully other people and like oh i know how to punch i can kick your ass you know don't don't do that don't be a bully so you know the magic and it's going to work and when you like use the magic like you think you are god and then whatever you see you want to use magic to like do something about it and like, oh, this is not of your business, but I have magic. Let me do it too. You know, that's bad to do. So you know the stuff. It's like I teach you martial art. Now you can punch and break something. Don't do that on other people. <laughs> you know you are a lethal weapon. Then be careful what you're doing. Like you just and then you might be like hurting someone, right? So you know how dangerous is it. Then you should know not to do that on other people unless it is needed for example like someone is uh threatening you or something like that and you need to stop the situation then you need to use it last one is it better to practice kung, <laughs> kung fu again is it better to practice kung fu indoor or outdoor does it really make a difference uh when practice kung fu in nature okay good one nature so you're saying that my house is not part of nature. I'm like outside, you know, supernatural house. <laughs> I understand, okay? So people are like, why don't you go to the forest and uh, look, look at the greens and the grass and let's practice in the backyard, you know, at least you have some grass, right? Uh, that's not true, okay? Um, practicing Kung Fu, if you actually have practiced Kung Fu, you should know standing on grass, like, you no know, dirt and grass and soil that kind of ground compared to like a flat ground at home the flat ground is so much better <laughs> okay 
Like, it doesn't have the unevenness where, like, you stand here and then it feels like a bump here, you know, like that. You know, grass is not even. And sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's softer, it's harder. And it's very hard to practice well on the grass land. And it's, like, non-consistent. Everywhere you step, you might bump into something by surprise. Who knows, right? One day it was raining and you step on there and the mud goes soft on you and... You know, I don't like practicing on those ground. If you have like concrete or whatever wood floor, it's flat. It's every day it's the same. And you can focus your practice better when your ground is nice. Also, for the uh, climate and bucks and everything, you know, like go outside in the grass. Like, yeah, go to the forest. Great. Have fun with the mosquito. <laughs> right? I have a... Uh, a bunch of disciples in Alaska, they have some scary mosquito over there. Even you open the window for a little bit, mosquito army will invade your house and it will be very scary. So if you go to those places and then you open the door and like, oh, fresh air, come in, you know, mosquito, mosquito. <laughs> if you go outside to practice and you think, oh, that's very nice. You have all the, all the grass and stuff, right? Not so nice, okay? <laughs> the mosquito is going to come up to you. So how nice is that, right? And then also, if you go into the forest, there are like bugs and everything that might bug you. And you cannot focus. Because like, let me do my Tai Chi. And then there's like, wow. <laughs> you know, or a spider just climb down on the tree. And then, <laughs> okay. You got to be careful, right? So, yeah. Not very fun. So when you practice Kung Fu, I always like it indoor. A controlled environment that is clean, temperature is like comfortable. Like for example, you have your air conditioning or whatever thing, okay? It's comfortable and you can now focus on what you're doing, which is the practice. If you can't even focus, like and you have all the nature and green and you start doing, you know, the movement and then the bugs is trying to eat you up, how how is that gonna be good for you anyway, right? I know like a lot of people like outdoor sport, but it it really depends on like where you are. I mean, even you play tennis, you go to a tennis court. You don't go into like the wild jungle and oh nature, let's play tennis. You don't do that, right? Okay, so yeah, for kung fu, I definitely say that it's best to do indoor, indoor. Yes, okay. Uh, if it's possible it's nice weather outside yeah open the door have some fresh air in it's nice if it's not well air conditioning make it comfortable and you can enjoy your session much better with um more things achieved out of that session okay so that's it for this uh session right here and well thanks for watching everyone and this is the end of uh this week's how to Sunday. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Remember to share, subscribe, like, and comment below. We'll see you next time. Folk sung, mo, learn, die, teen,